It's great to have you, the, the great T. Graham Brown, the one and only. The one and only. His tennis. His tennis, exactly. Boy, you've done your homework. No, oh, I'd like to think so. I'm a big fan, sir. Thank you, man. It's great to talk with you again. I just got off the phone with uh, John Rich, called me from Providence, Rhode Island, you know, big and rich. Oh, yeah, sure. And we're going to do a show together uh, a week from tomorrow in Nashville. and We're doing the Music Mafia show, so... Oh, that ought to be great. Yeah, I was just setting that up with him. He's a nice guy. We've been knowing each other a long time. Is Gretchen Wilson playing that, too, this year? Yes, yeah, she's going to be there. Um, uh, a guy from Ozzy Osbourne's band is going to be there. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember. There's going to be several uh, artists there, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It sounds great. Now, what day is that, T? Only in Nashville. That's uh, a week from tomorrow. Oh, that's... That, um... That ought to be great down there. I, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it down for that then, but... When are you coming back down? I'm coming down uh, for the weekend of March uh, 22nd, so... Well, I hope I'm in town. I'd like to see you. Yeah, it would be great to see you again. I'm, are you work, Do you know if you're working the Opry that weekend? Uh, I don't know, brother. I think we're probably out on the road, actually. Uh, our road schedule is kicking in pretty strong this weekend, and we'll be gone most most weekends, you know, till probably November. Yeah, I know you're a busy guy. I, I saw you played the Opry last Friday night. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to listen in, but how did it go? Oh, it was great. We had a big time. It was a lot of fun. I, I got to see Kathy Matea. I don't get to see her very often, and a friend of mine, Jim Lauderdale, was there, and he's a great artist, and uh, it was just, the Grand Ole Opry's fun, and we did it at the Ryman Auditorium, which makes it twice as much fun, I think. Yeah, the the original stage right down there. The Mother Church, as they call it. Mm-hmm. The, the best sounding music hall in the whole world. You are so right. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, so, T, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started in the music business? Oh, man, I was uh, trying to play baseball at the University of Georgia when I was uh, 17, I guess, was when I started my freshman year. And that would have been 1972. And I had an offer, a friend of mine played guitar, and we got together and learned a few songs, and a, another friend of mine worked at the local Holiday Inn, and uh, they had a bar in there, but they never had anybody singing in it, and he got us an audition with a, one of the guys that ran the place, and we sang a few songs, and he said, you're hired, I'll pay you $150 a week, and, and so I went back to baseball practice that afternoon and told my coach that all I'd ever wanted to do was play baseball, but that I couldn't play baseball and sing at the same time. And I asked him some advice. I said, what do you think I ought to do, coach? And he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Tony, I think you ought to go sing. <laughs> so that was the end of my baseball career. And uh, that would have been October of uh, 1973. So I've been doing it that long. And uh, you came to Nashville in 1982, right? Yeah. We came in the spring of 82, and uh, I started uh, hanging out at, at different happy hours at bars in the afternoons where all the music people would come and, and talk over the day's festivities, and I got some uh, jobs singing demos, and then by uh, December, which would have been, I don't know, eight months later, uh, I signed with CBS Songs, uh, which was a big publishing company as a songwriter. Mm -hmm. It's now called EMI. Uh, it's been bought several times, but EMI owns it. And I wrote probably about 16 years over there. And um, just been at it, man, a couple of years. Uh, I guess it was 1984 I signed with Capitol Records and made our first uh, recordings. And they, they put out a song called uh, Drowning in Memories. That, that it's not on any album, but it went to number 39 on the Billboard chart, so they figured we had a top 40, and they they uh, decided to put another song out. and It was I Tell It Like It Used To Be, and that was my first big hit. And, One of my favorite songs. You know, back then, you would, you would get signed to what they call a singles deal. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't get, pardon me, you wouldn't get signed to do an album, you would get signed to do singles. And my deal was six singles, and, and the uh, Capitol Records had the option of, of signing me to do an album, 
at any time during those six singles. So what they would do back then was they would put out a a, a vinyl forty five, and you know if it got played enough, maybe they might put out another one, and if it got played, they might put out another one, and then if you finally had a big enough hit, they would what they would is is called they would call for an album, and you had to go in and and cut an entire album so they could put it out. So luckily on my second single was I Tell It Like It Used To Be, so they immediately called for an album, and, and we went back in and uh, finished an album, and and it came out in late 85, maybe early 86, and that was the first album I ever had out. Mm-hmm. But I'd recorded some things. I'm from Athens, Georgia, and we, we recorded... Uh, a couple of singles down there and put them out and had local hits and so I was you know I'd been in the studio before so it wasn't like it was brand new to me no but that's how that's how all that uh, major label recording got started and uh, you've had numerous other hits uh, Hell and High Water went to number one in 86 right yeah that was a number one and then they um, well they put out I Tell Like It Used To Be first and I think it I don't know it went to i think it was top 10 i can't remember and uh then they put out one called i wish that i could hurt that way again and it was a little bit higher in the charts and then they put out uh hell and high water i think was next and it was number one and then they put out one called don't go to strangers and it was number one that was all off the first album Mm -hmm. and And, um i don't know how many uh i'm sure you got a, a reference book there that tells you all this stuff but I think I've had about 20, maybe 20 Billboard charted records. You know, some of them didn't, might have charted in the 90s or something like that. But uh, at least they charted. So, But I haven't had any Billboard success really in the last few years. 